Hi, this is my classic Macintosh SE30 that I've been restoring over the past few months. And I just wanted to record a quick little video showing how I've been able to get this computer connected to the modern internet. Uh, so what I have down here uh, is uh, the heart of this operation, this little device called the old net Wi-Fi modem. It's essentially a, a little device that emulates an old school Hayes compatible modem. So you can see I have it connected here via serial cable to the modem port on the back of the Mac. Uh, over here we have a, uh, a USB power supply. Uh, but what this device does is it pretends to be a modem, but instead of dialing into a BBS or an ISP, as you would in the 80s and 90s, to get onto the internet, it instead uh, connects to the Wi-Fi. So the local Wi-Fi network here in my house. Uh, so I want to show really quickly, this is kind of the most basic operation of the device. If I do AT in this terminal application on the Mac, it says OK, that means the device is ready. If I do AT net 1, that means I'm saying, hey, I want you to do uh, proper telnet uh, command processing when you make a connection. So if you're going to use this uh, as if you were connected to a BBS, modern BBS services uh, are usually provided over Telnet. So in order to connect to one, I'm going to, as you would dial in a phone number to a BBS back in the 80s, instead I'm going to dial directly into a Telnet server. So this NetHack server here, um, and you can see, there we go, we're connected, and I'm not going to log in, but if I hit W, I can watch games in progress, and if we look here, uh, I mean, my terminal is 24 by 80 characters, so we have an 80 by 24 there, under D, so if I press D, we can go watch this guy, and it looks like he's got a little bit of weird behavior in the corner there, but here's somebody playing NetHack here, let me try disconnecting and reconnecting to somebody else. How about this guy, A? All right, cool. So here's somebody else who's playing NetHack. So this is kind of like the most basic example and the example you see everybody doing uh, with this kind of device, which is you take your old computer and you dial into this BBS service, uh, you know, just a Telnet server somewhere on the internet. And this is great. Um, if you dialed up to BBSs back in the day, this may look very familiar to you. Uh, for me, I only very early on connected to BBSs. When I, when I started connecting to the internet as a kid, it was via dialing up an ISP and using a, a web browser. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of this server. So there's no carrier, I've disconnected. I'm going to very quickly, ATNet oops, zero. Okay, so that should turn off the telnet processing um, because I'm not gonna connect to a telnet server. Instead, what I'm going to do so I'm going to quit this app, and I'm going to start up free PPP. Now, if you don't know what PPP is, it's point-to-point -point protocol, and it's basically the, the method by which your modem would dial into an ISP and then set up a, a TCP IP connection and forward that data over to your Mac, which was not connected to a, a TCP IP network, right? It's just one connection between you and the ISP uh, so that you can browse the internet, use FTP or other uh, web-based stuff. So I have this configured to, uh, since we're not dialing into an ISP, instead I'm going to dial into this Hey Hey, which is a, the name of a, uh, a little Linux server that I have running on my network. And that server uh, is basically running a PPP server on it uh, on the 1000 port. And so with this, I can now dial into my Linux server, which will then proxy uh, uh, connect to the real internet. And as far as this Mac is concerned, um, the protocol is the same. It doesn't know that it's not dialing over a phone line, that it's actually connecting over the Wi-Fi to my network. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect right here. Now I didn't come up with this technique. I basically found other people who had done similar things um, uh, and tweaked it to get it to work for my setup. But there we go, so we have it connected. And with that connected, Close setup. You can see the little, nice little icon in the corner here. The phone's off the hook. It's still connected. And now I can go into recent applications. Let's go to uh, Netscape. We're going to go ahead and start up 
Good old Netscape Navigator 2.02, .02, copyright 1995. So now that we have Netscape up and running, I'm going to just go to my bookmarks. I'm going to go to Frog Find. If you haven't tried out Frog Find uh, yet, it's a great website. Basically, it is a search engine that is doing some processing on its end to clean out all of the modern uh, stuff out of web pages so that you can search and browse the internet from these vintage computers uh, that can only handle older versions of HTML and really basic websites. So I'm going to go ahead and search up, let's see, how about, I'm going to go see cheese, hit enter, and you see we're getting some results here. All right, and I can go here, and here I am. I'm browsing the internet. So if I go here, if I click on this Wikipedia link, instead of going directly to Wikipedia, which would look awful in this browser, uh, by going through Frog Find, it's actually uh, parsing all the data in a way to create a nice, simple text, you know, web page that I can go ahead and browse. And it's going to 3.5K a second, so a little bit faster than a 56K modem back in the day, but not by much. of a long article. Do we have a lot of things to say about cheese? All right, and you can see just, I'm gonna go ahead and click on a, a image here on the page and show that that works. Hey, what do you know? There's some good old black and white rendered cheese. Okay, cool. So we have a functional web browser and uh, kind of fun to browse the, the internet on this old machine that's only 16 megahertz. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and quit Netscape for right now. I'll look at some of the other programs that I've gotten working. So, oh, that takes a little bit of time. How about we start up Fetch? Fetch is an FTP program. Oh, all right, let's go to the shortcuts. So I'm gonna go here and connect to Macintosh Garden. So Macintosh Garden is a, a website that has a bunch of uh, vintage Mac software on it. And here I am connected to their FTP server so I can download uh, you know, old programs directly from their server to my Mac. Uh, it's not the fastest way to get things onto this computer, but it is very convenient, seeing as how I haven't had to move any floppy disks or uh, copy files or set up anything else. Like I'm going to just, just dial into the internet and go ahead and download it. And I'm not going to go into these folders because they're not organized, so there's just you know one giant file list of thousands of files. But I, mean, I, could, I could look at it very quickly here, and you'll see that it will take a while to start. So we got a bunch of things that I could just go ahead and download directly to the Mac to try things out. Some of these things, like whatever this is, would take a long, long time, if not forever, to download. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. I don't want the, the file list. Okay. Now, one thing that I found uh, fun was it, so I, in the beginning I showed, uh, you know, just using a terminal program, dial, connecting directly to the modem, and then using the ATDT to, uh, you know, dial directly into a Telnet server, right? And let it do the Telnet handling, and you saw that there was like some weird glitchiness in the way it was loading um, some of the lines, so maybe it's not handling it all perfectly. But what I can do here, is I've started this program, Better Telnet, which is an actual Telnet client, and now that I have a PPP internet connection, on top of that connection, I can connect to that NetHack server again with a program that understands uh, all the nuances of a, a, a proper Telnet connection. And I can go ahead, and now I'm connected to that server here, and I should have a better experience. So I'm going to go ahead and 
click on D was the one that was messed up. All right. There we go. So now I'm connected to the server. We don't have all that weird uh, glitchiness down on the corner um, because this program uh, is doing a better job of handling the, uh, the Telnet command codes. So yeah, so I can dial directly into a BBS, uh, directly from the modem, or I can dial into my quote-unquote ISP, aka the Linux server in my on my network, and then I can use Telnet on top of that connection, and it works just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit. Oh, quit. Yeah, and exit out of that. And so that's it. I hope you found this video interesting.